You're watching Goal.com's mid-season review focusing on the biggest clubs in Europe. Let's talk about uh, Inter Milan now, Pete. Um, and much like PSG, new manager came in, spent big in the summer, um, got some good players in and are probably going to spend again in January. But how do you assess what Stramaccioni's done so far? Well, Stramaccioni is a, an interim man. He's, uh, you know, he's was in charge of, of the youth team, which won the Next Gen Series last season, and uh, he was trusted by Moratti with with the with the main role uh, after the departure of Claudio Ranieri. And it, I would say it's been a success uh, thus far. Obviously, there's no Champions League football for Inter this season, but they've made their mark in the Europa League with their their fringe men. But you know, some some of the results in Serie A have been uneven. They've had some teething problems when it comes to you know incorporating those new elements into what was already an established squad. But you know, they're not so far off the pace at the top of the table. They've had some pretty impressive results, especially away against against uh, champions Juventus, who who hadn't been beaten in 49 games before that. So I think the experiment with Stramaccioni has gone fairly well so far. Um, still some experienced heads there, like Javier Zanetti, of course, uh, to lead this new generation through. But a little bit more time is required. But I do think that, that Inter are, are going to once again scale the heights that they have been uh, in the last few years. They're probably going to be the closest rivals, I think, to Juventus winning the title again. Um, you know, they, they have beaten Juventus, they've beaten Milan, they've beaten Napoli this season, so they've had some good results. Um, you know, mentioned there, um, Javier Zanetti, I, mean, I, I was fortunate enough to play against him uh, a long time ago in the uh, UEFA Cup for Ipswich at the San Siro and uh, luckily enough got his shirt and, and he's still going. It makes me feel slightly embarrassed that I'm sat here retired and talking about football, but um, he, he's been magnificent for them and, and a great example for some of the, the younger players that they've got in their squad. And it's an interesting point about that mixture between old and new. Uh, we're seeing the Mourinho Champions League winning team being dismantled slowly and Sremachoni's doing that. and. Uh, the figure for that in January or in next summer is going to be Wesley Schneider because Inter are trying to get him to sign a new contract. He's got 18 months left on his current deal. He's point blank refused to sign the deal on the table because essentially it would be asking him to take a pay cut. They made him take down his Twitter account and they've frozen him out of the team. So that's going to be the big issue for Inter. They're trying to find this way, this way, this way of building a new team but they don't want to completely alienate a player as big as Schneider, or they're going to have to sell him in January. He dreams of playing for Man United, but I can't see that happening. Pete, any, any news on that? Do you want to, what are your thoughts on that? What, what, are, what are Inter without Schneider? Or has he not been playing that well anyway? I think Inter are a lot better without Schneider. For me, Schneider hasn't, hasn't really excelled since Jose Mourinho left. He, he's not really played well since the World Cup, if I'm, to be perfectly honest. And I do think that they've discovered this new way of playing that doesn't incorporate Wesley Schneider. I think Rodrigo Palacio, the Argentinian that they brought in over the summer, has been a revelation. And, and I think he, he carries out the duties in that attacking midfield role a lot more responsibly than Schneider does. And I think the, the number one priority in terms of an enhancement to the squad in, in the winter will be maybe to discover a backup for Diego Melito, who is getting on a little bit now. But, you know, it's still capable of firing in the goals. But I think they need a capable deputy. And, you know, it might be a low-profile signing, somebody like Rolando Bianchi, who Manchester City fans might remember none too fondly. But, you know, he could come in and, and perhaps be the, uh, the, the deputy for Melito. I think they're looking for a centre-back as well, Pete. Someone like Campagnaro from Napoli, who's having a contract dispute there. So that could be something else they, they might be looking at. And crucially, able to play in a back three, which is the Stramaccioni way plays with, with wing-backs like Alvaro Pereira and uh, Yuto Nagatomo. And, um, yeah, when he, when he uses that back three, he, he requires people like, like Hugo Campagnaro. They've been using Estien, Estien, Esteban Cambiasso there in, in recent games. And he's been playing quite well, just use, distributes the ball beautifully. But, yeah, I think they will need a little bit more of a defensive specialist in that respect. They definitely need that to keep on the coattails of Juve. You know, if Juve, obviously, sign a striker, uh, and they're, the, they're the ones to catch in Serie A anyway. I think man for man, Inter probably would be the closest thing to a competing team uh, to Juventus. But obviously there's, there's a few dif different generations in and among that Inter team now. So for Stramaccioni, the important thing is, is, is to, to mesh those different generations together and, and to maintain some consistency because results can be erratic. And I know you're, you think that they're better off without Wesley Schneider, but I think with someone of that class, you know, when, you, when you're pushing for, for a title, uh, you need sometimes that little bit of extra quality to get you over the line. So I still think if they can find a way of getting him into the team, um, that they'd be better with him in the side. OK, thanks, guys. Uh, for all the news uh, on what happens to Wesley Schneider, whether he, whether he stays at Inter Milan or indeed goes to Man United, as Greg's hinted he, he might do, uh, go to goal.com for all the latest news and transfer activity.